Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're going to discuss the advanced formulas and function using Microsoft Excel. And today we're going to discuss this sum, average, min, max, count, or count A, and if. This illustration will show the different types of formulas and function. So let's get started. We will start with the SAM. SAM will add all the values of cells in the argument. So first, we make sure that we write a formula starting with an equal sign. Then type SAM, open parenthesis, then select the range of the values that you're going to SAM. For example, I want to add the values from D4 to D13. So if you notice, it was enclosed by a blue border and it is also stated in the argument so let's close it with a parenthesis and enter so this has shown the total value of the cell d4 to d13 so take note of the formula in the formula bar so this is the formula that we use for the sum okay this one this is the sum so this argument can be changed it depends on what range you're going to select next we will discuss the average we'll get the average of all the values of cell in an argument so again let's start with the equal sign but for this illustration we will use this column e and we will start with e4 so let's start with equal sign type average if you notice as you type there is a suggested function in the drop down but you can still write it if you really want to write it on so open parenthesis and select what values you're going to include in your argument so for this case you need to select crease one of john from b4 to d4 and then close take note of the formula and press enter you will see that this is the average of John from his quiz 1, quiz 2, and quiz 3. Now, this is the question. Are you going to write again the formula from E5 to E13 for the rest of the students? The answer is actually yes, but there is a simpler and an easy way to do that. So just click the first formula you have in this column and just click small box in the corner you can double click or you can click and drag to the last part of the entry so see when you use autofill this will copy the formula of the selected cell but it will auto increment the number of the cell reference corresponding to the row it has but the column will still be the same and this is an illustration of creating an average function and autofill it vertically now let's have another example of average here in average per crease we can write same function but different values so example this one you have the right sum then open parenthesis then you select all crease one and three for all the students so if you notice again there is a blue border that shows in the argument so just close and enter so before that take note of the formula and the function that we used and press enter then you can select autofill to copy the formula horizontally so in this part you will see that the only thing that changed here is the column c and same row number this means that when you copy or when you click autofill using horizontal direction, this means that the only variable that changes is the column. But if you use it vertically, the only variable that changes is the number of row. Next, we will discuss the minimum or the mean. So, mean gets the lowest cell value included in the argument. To write a mean function, we will use this illustration here in cell B16. First, you have to write the formula starting with equal sign, then type mean, then open parenthesis, then click 
the range you will use. When you say min, it will identify a range and select the minimum value being included in the range. So for this example, the minimum or the lowest grade for the crease one is 73. And again, you can drag and copy the formula of this part. Next, we will discuss the max. Max gets the highest cell value included in the argument. So for this example, let's try to write equal sign max then open parenthesis then click the value range that you're going to include and close parenthesis so take note again for the max formula then autofill the formula horizontally now we already have the max the mean the average so now let's move on to if using if will give you a conditional formula that will assess for a certain value so for this example we will use if function we need to identify if the student's average can be determined as passed or failed so this is the formula that we're going to use so if condition or if function will be like this so start with equal sign right if then open parenthesis you need to select if you notice this is the argument syntax or the argument order of if function when you say logical test we need to have a comparison so for this we need to compare the average if it is greater or equal to 75 since for this class record we identify 75 is the passing so click the average of this certain student so it reflects as e4 as the class reference so if e4 is greater or equal to 75 so this is the logical test then put comma if it is true that the average or e4 is greater or equal 75 when you're going to write a statement you need to put quotation but if you write a number just put directly the number that you want to reflect on that cell so for this one i will write past comma so after the comma it will ask for what is the statement if the value is false so we will write fail so take note of the formula for the if condition Again, I repeat, if condition shows first the logical test that explains if the number from E4 is greater or equal to 75, the true value for that is pass and the false value for that is fail. So after writing the formula, press enter. See, this changes based on the average. If this average falls below 75, this will also change into fail. Now, let's copy using autofill the formula that we have here. So, we can double click and you will see the different statement based on the average of the student. So, again, this will matter if this average will be true or will be false in this if condition. Now, if you can see here, we have two failed and the rest passed. So, that is the if condition. Now, let's move on to the next formula function we will use the count we will have the count a and the count if so first let's start with count a count a is a function will only count if the cell is not empty so let's try using the count a so equal sign then type count a then open parenthesis now we need to know the number of students so we will highlight the name of the students so just highlight a4 to a13 and then close parenthesis take note of the formula being typed in this cell so this means that we need to count all from a4 to a13 that is not empty so if you notice there is no empty space here so it will count all of that so so press enter so it's 10 and basically if you're using a count it's easier for you to get the number of students now this part need to use a condition because we need to count if we can see a passed or a failed so another type of count is 
we need to use this equal count if then open parenthesis then select the range as your reference so here you have this syntax or order so count if range so here this is the range f4 to f13 then you need to follow it with a comma and the criteria is if you want to find a word past you need to write it with quotation since it is a text so take note of the formula and press enter so it identifies that it has a past we will also use this for the field so for this one is the past and this one is the field so same formula but different criteria so equals count if then same range and different criteria so for this is failed again and again take note of the formula and press enter so here you have completed all the formula and function that we use for this e-tech class record so good luck for your quiz assignment after this video thanks for watching and good day